In this video, we want to talk about the feed-in management and the electricity market, which is getting more and more important due to the renewable energy systems, which are feeding their electricity to the grid. You see on the left-hand side, the controllable demise-driven power plants like a coal or nuclear power plant. So they are easily, uh, or they can easily adopt their output due to the electricity demand. On the right hand side we have an increasing capacity of uh, PV systems and wind turbines which are feeding in their electricity. Um, currently in Germany we have about 50 gigawatts of wind and 50 gigawatts of uh, PV installed in Germany. So about 50% of uh, the uh, capacity um, relies on renewables in Germany. and. Uh, this influences, of course, the grid stability um, as the um, energy production of the wind turbines and the PV systems uh, depend on the weather conditions, on the radiation conditions, on the wind speed. Um, and um, this has to be um, controlled by the uh, grid operators, by the TC TSOs, uh, which have to um, adopt the uh, power outcome of the fossil energy systems uh, to stabilize the grid. The grid operators have to fulfill this, this equation to uh, stabilize the grid. Uh, so what we have is here in this equation we have the sum of the power input which is fed into the grid. This must be equal to the sum of the, the energy taken from the grid. So PO is the, the output and we have uh, the, the losses within the grid. And this equation must be fulfilled in order to, to stabilize the grid. So what are the different types of inputs? Of course, first of all, the power generation coming from the uh, power plants, the fossil ones and the renewable ones, which fed, uh, they feed their electricity to, to the grid. Then, of course, there's an uh, input coming from neighboring grids on the same voltage level. So if you are, for example, on a medium voltage uh, grid level in your, in your medium voltage um, grid, uh, there is uh, energy coming from a neighboring grid, from a neighboring area, which has to be um, considered in this in this equation. And of course, there might be some returns of uh, coming from subordinate grids on a smaller voltage level that uh, electricity is uh, fed into the grid level you have on your on your voltage level. On the other hand, the outputs, of course, first of all, the loads, so the energy consumption which is taken from your grid level. So on a medium voltage level, you have um, companies, for example, small uh, towns or cities, which are connected uh, to the medium voltage um, grid. And so you have the loads. On the other hand, of course, there are subordinate grids on a smaller voltage level, which are taking uh, the energy from your grid uh, level. And of course, there are neighboring grids uh, on the same voltage level, which are also uh, use the power and take the power on the on this voltage level from your grid. So that are the outputs on the one hand, the inputs on the other hand, of course, then there are the grid losses which have to be considered. And this equation has to be fulfilled in case of any deviation. If there's more power um, input than the output, then this will uh, the consequence will be the increase of the fre frequency. As we have seen, uh, if uh, power is incre increased, then uh, consequences that the frequency will, will also increase. And then you, on the one hand, decrease the power input by reducing mainly the, the power generation. Or on the other hand, of course, you could, reduce, you could increase the power output by um, increasing the, the loads. And this, this task, or this is the main task of the TSOs and the operators on a lower grid level, uh, that they have to fulfill this equation here um, to, to stabilize the grid, that the input and the output is in balance. One main issue of the TSOs is the frequency control uh, in the grid. So we have the nominal frequency in the European grid of uh, 50 Hz and uh, the grid operators have to ensure that this uh, frequency um, is hold and uh, there are no deviation from this nominal frequency. So what do we have? We have the power plant which is feeding in uh, the electric power to the grid uh, that gives us an actual frequency of about uh, 50 Hz. So we have the nominal power but what we can 
derive is uh, delta f, so a deviation from this nominal power of uh, 50 hertz. Um, from this deviation, uh, we can calculate uh, the delta p, so the uh, change of the power um, to uh, reduce this deviation to um, get a frequency of 50 hertz. So this delta p uh, is, is, is used, is derived, and is combined with the nominal power of the next time step. So there's a prognosis of the uh, electric load in the grid. Uh, for the next time step uh, due to uh, the experience over uh, decades and centuries of the uh, electric energy demand in the grid. So it's very well known what will be the energy demand within the next minutes. So this gives us uh, the information what will, will be the power or the electric demand we have plus the duration we need to consider uh, to reduce the duration of this uh, from the nominal frequency. Um, using the actual power of the power plant plus this uh, information of the nominal power and this uh, delta p gives us an information how to change uh, the outcome of this uh, power plant if the power has to be uh, risen or decreased um, to get this nominal power of 50 hertz and that gives us a closed circle um, that this uh, frequency control is uh, controlled by uh, the outcome, by the power production of the power plant um, to stabilize the grid at uh, 50 hertz uh, plus minus 0.2 hertz. Um, in the European um, grid we have uh, what you could keep in mind is that the frequency gradient in this European grid is 20 gigawatts per hertz. So if you want to change the frequency in the, in the European grid uh, by one hertz, you need an additional uh, power of 20 gigawatts. Um, so there's a, there's a large amount of power needed to change the frequency significantly and small deviations can easily be adopted by minor changes of the outcome or the power production of these uh, power plants. If you take a look at the power generation by the fossil power plants, by the wind turbines and the PV systems in Germany 2019, you can see in the, the upper diagram uh, the energy production per month from January to December. In, in, in average, we have between uh, 40 and uh, 50 petawatt hours uh, power generation per month. Mainly, uh, we have this fossil power plants, in, also including bioenergy and, and hydropower in, in gray. And then they, we have these um, volatile systems, uh, wind in uh, light blue and in yellow uh, the PV systems. What you can see is uh, very clearly that uh, during the winter time um, we have more wind power and just a small amount of, of solar power and uh, during the summer month June, July uh, it's the other way around. There's less wind energy in the grid and more PV energy in the grid. Uh, in the uh, diagram at the bottom uh, you see the daily uh, energy generation in gigawatt hours. So again, you see this uh, variation with uh, phases with a high wind speed. For example, here in, in March, you see high wind speed. Um, so a lot of wind energy per day. And uh, during the summer month, uh, phases uh, with a lot of wind uh, PV energy, uh, larger yellow bars. And then going further to the uh, uh, to the winter. Uh, month you see again increase of the wind energy um, per day and a decrease of the electricity production by the uh, PV system and uh, this trend is, uh, is continuing so um, due to the increased installation uh, installed capacity of the wind turbines and PV systems um, and uh, the shutdown in particular of the nuclear power plants in Germany will face an increase of uh, wind and PV energy in the grid, uh, which is of course it, it depends on the weather conditions. Uh, so this uh, will be getting more important within the next years uh, to um, handle this uh, wind energy and PV energy in the grid uh, to keep uh, the grid stable.
if we focus on the PV sector, you can see in this diagram uh, the electricity production in Germany on the 1st of June 2020. Um, that was a day with the uh, maximum uh, electricity generation by PV systems, which has been observed in Germany uh, over the uh, whole time. So you can see with the data of the Federal Network Agency um, that the maximum uh, power has been reached at 1 p.m. with a maximum power of uh, 33.2 gigawatts with a installed capacity of uh, 50.7 gigawatts uh, in April 2020. So what you can see is the typical slope of this uh, energy production curve on a, a summer day uh, with these uh, base load systems, uh, biomass, hydropower, uh, nuclear and lignite or brown coal uh, power plants. Uh, then we have hard coal and natural gas even on, this, on a constant level. We have the uh, onshore um, and the offshore wind turbines, so onshore, uh, offshore in dark blue and onshore wind turbines in, in, in light blue. And then this is the uh, power generation curve of the PV systems in Germany. And the maximum value has been reached at uh, 1 p.m. Um, so there's a significant amount of electric energy which has to be handled by the grid operators, uh, by the TSOs, that they are able to, to distribute this uh, electricity from the PV systems. Uh, and they, of course, they have to adopt uh, the fossil um, power plants uh, that the total power production fits to the demand in the electric grid. Let's take a quick example how the energy production and the demand in the electric grid might fit. So what we have here uh, we have the energy production of a PV system and a uh, wind turbine um, in, for example, in, in March. And on the other hand, we have the energy demand of residential customers and the energy demand of commercial and industrial customers uh, for one day. So you see this typical slope of this uh, PV production curve. And then uh, depending on the wind speed, of course, this change of the wind uh, power production. On the other hand, these are the uh, load profiles of uh, residential customers and of commercial and industrial customers uh, normalized to, an, um, uh, to the power. And what we want to do now is we want to combine on the one hand the en energy production by PV and wind to fulfill the uh, daily uh, energy demand. So we want to have a look at the energy balance for one day that the PV and the wind turbines fulfill the energy balance. Uh, and we will combine the energy demand, the profiles of the residential customers and the commercial customers to see how do these uh, production and demand profiles fit and what is happening um, uh, during uh, the different hours of the day. In this diagram, you can see the resulting electricity production by PV and wind and the electricity demand by residential and commercial customers in the federal state Saarland in the southwestern part of Germany. So what are the assumptions? Uh, we have taken a characteristic day in winter. So let's say the beginning of March, we have 450,000 households, about 1 million inhabitants. Um, then the residential electricity demand uh, on this day is about 5.1 gigawatt hours. The commercial and industrial electricity demand is four times larger than the residential uh, demand. So it's about 20.4 gigawatt hours. So overall on this uh, day in March, we have a total um, electricity demand of 25.5 gigawatt hours. And now what we uh, have done is that we have said, okay, the PV system, well, what is the capacity of wind and PV uh, to fulfill this uh, energy balance or this demand of 25.5 gigawatt hours? And what we get is this slope of curve of the electricity production by the PV systems and by the uh, wind turbines in, in dark blue. So you see this rise uh, in the morning as the PV systems start to, to operate. Uh, we have these um, 
uh, also the wind turbines, then this drop in the afternoon, and then in this phase between 6 and uh, 8 p.m., there's no sunshine anymore, and we have no wind speed, so there is no renewable energy production. Uh, on the other hand, you see in, in black, that is the demand uh, or the load curve of the residential and industrial uh, customers with a increase in the morning and then a flat condition uh, until uh, noon, a uh, slight drop and then re-increase uh, in the evening and then a drop uh, until the end of the day. And what you see in, the, in, in red and in green, that is the um, energy cover by the renewables. So in green, then where there's more energy than demanded, the color in red represents the deficit of energy production by the renewables. Um, so you see that uh, although the uh, energy balance is fulfilled, um, we have a phase of uh, from from the beginning of the day with a deficit. Then in the from the morning until uh, 3 p.m., there's more more electricity in the grid than uh, demanded, and then we have this drop uh, in the in the afternoon and uh, deficit uh, during the the evening. Um, and of course, this uh, deviation um, has to be adopted. We need to uh, export the electricity uh, from this grid. And on the other end, in this red part, we have to uh, we need to import electricity from other grids uh, for, or from neighboring grids to fulfill the demand. Um, and that has to be done by the grid operators that they need to know what will be the electricity production by PV and wind in the sector, in this region. Uh, in this case, they can sell this energy and uh, beginning uh, at, uh, at 3 p.m. they need to buy electricity uh, to fulfill the, the demand and to stabilize uh, the grid uh, during these uh, periods. The transmission system operators, the TSOs, are responsible for balancing the renewable power production regarding uh, the electricity demand in the grid and the grid region and on the other end of course of the uh, power production by the fossil energy system. Um, the electricity is uh, sold and bought on a centralized platform where all the participants can exchange their electricity transparently uh, according to the price they are willing to pay or to receive and of course according to the capacity of the electric grid. On the right hand side you see um, the different markets uh, on the different time scale. We have the EX uh, with a future market or for the mid and long term future. That's a continuous market with the future contracts regarding the del delivery of electricity uh, over periods on, on, on a weekly, monthly, quarterly and even yearly or annual basis. Uh, you can on this EX market uh, the electricity is exchanged on an annual hour, so there's a base load exchange, the peak load exchange um, uh, for the mid and long term future, so even on, the, on an annual basis. On the other hand, for the renewable uh, energy system, the wind turbines and the PV system, the EPEX spot market is more important. Uh, this market is differentiated into the intraday and the day ahead market. So day ahead means uh, selling of solar power and wind power based on day ahead power prediction so that um, the, the PV system operators know what they will feed in uh, within the next 24 up to uh, 48 hours. On the other hand, there's the intraday market. So there are adjustments of deviations at the uh, European Energy Exchange according to the intraday PV and wind power prediction. Um, of course, if you sell the energy of your wind turbine or, the, or your PV system uh, on this day ahead market and uh, there are duations occurring due to changing weather conditions, uh, the adjustments are rather costly as if you have sold the specific amount of energy on the market and you can't deliver this amount, you have to um, buy the remaining deviation, which might be very costly. So in this case, of course, a very accurate interday and day ahead uh, PV and wind power forecast is necessary uh, to uh, be able to earn money on the market and to reduce uh, possible losses.
if you take a closer look at the day ahead electricity market of EPEX Sport, um, what do we have? Uh, the, the day ahead market is an auctioned market, so the auctions uh, take, take place at a specific time of the day uh, with bundles of liquidity, and this enables the EPEX Sport to determine our reliable reference prices. Uh, for the respective market areas um, for each hour of the next day um, the the epix uh, calculates the market clearing price and the market clearing volumes which is resulting from the aggregated supply and demand curves based on the orders of the exchange members um, so the physical delivery of power quantities traded on the auctions that, that takes place on the following day uh, of course, there are uh, the possibilities of correcting the long-term production plan with the regard to the hourly production plan of these uh, power systems or power plants. Uh, what you can do is you can sell during um, the hours with high prices or you can buy electricity uh, during uh, the hours with the low prices if you have flexible power plants or a flexible uh, energy demand. Um, the, the adjustment for the residential load profile runs on an hourly basis and of course the market for, for the production from renewable energy sources like wind and PV um, that's of course just for the short term that they had an interday um, it's not that easy to, to sell uh, the electricity on the long term market or the future market. On the other hand we have their interday electricity market uh, these uh, markets enable the members to buy and sell uh, their power at a very short uh, time scale for a flexible balance of their portfolio. So uh, the price formation on the intraday electricity market takes place in a continuous trading. So all uh, the sell and the buy orders are constantly checked on compatibility. And as soon as two of these orders, so a buy order and a sell order are executable, they are matched. Um, on the top of these hourly contracts, there are 15-minute contracts that can be traded on different uh, EPEX spot intraday power markets. The trading hours are quarters of an hour to 45 minutes before the start of the period, and this is running continuously uh, during the day. So the idea of this intraday market is uh, a correction or optimization of the day ahead uh, position or the day ahead uh, exchange. On the one hand, of course, uh, regarding the renewable energy producers, um, due to changes in the forecast that uh, there are different weather conditions than, than expected uh, during the day ahead market, um, that you can opt or correct your, um, your exchange. On the other hand, you can optimize the power plant usage as the power plant generator or the operator of a fossil power plant. Uh, as a customer, you can optimize your demand and sell or buy uh, the energy on the market um, during uh, low price phases. And of course, in case of any power plant failures, which of course occurs um, continuously uh, on a small scale, um, the intraday market allows uh, to, to uh, adopt to these uh, power plant failures. Um, and this uh, intraday market as well as the day ahead market is very important for the renewable energy system operators like the wind operators and, and PV system operators as they need to sell their electricity on the intraday market and day ahead market uh, to make money um, beside uh, any feed in tariff which might, might be paid um, and within the next years there won't be probably any feed in tariff anymore so um, the PV systems and the wind turbines are full participants uh, of the grid and they must run on these markets to earn money. If you take a look at the trading volumes at the European Power Exchange EPEX spot, you can see on the left hand side uh, the intraday volumes in terawatt hours and on the right hand side the day ahead volumes also in terawatt hours. So you can see that uh, the day ahead volumes uh, is on a rather constant level of about 500 terawatt hours um, electricity which is um, 
traded on the epic spot uh, per year on the left hand side you see this increase of the intraday volumes uh, with uh, the, or the, the volumes have are three times larger in 2019 compared to the years 2011 and 2012 this is regarding uh, the increase of wind and particular of, of pv systems which need to participate in these uh, intraday and day ahead market uh, they sell their electricity on these markets and that's the reason why the volumes are increasing and this um, this development will continue probably due to an um, increase of wind capacity and pv capacity in germany uh, within the next years so the question is now how can the uh, electricity production be predicted for wind turbines or PV systems? Um, so there's a multi-step forecast algorithm who is able to predict the regional PV power or the wind power with a high accuracy. Uh, what you can see here in this diagram is the example how this works for the PV systems. Uh, what is necessary, first of all, uh, uh, the prediction of the radiation within the next 24 and 48 hours uh, to participate participate on the day ahead and intraday market so there are or there's the radiation forecast um, we have uh, satellite data and um, also we have uh, data from on-site measurements of, of wind turbines or pv systems and of course uh, what is used is uh, our representative PV system sites uh, within a grid region uh, and this data is uh, aggregated to a site-specific radiation prediction so that uh, within uh, the grid region uh, there's a high accurate uh, prediction of the radiation for the next uh, hours or the next uh, two days. Uh, based on this radiation prediction uh, power prediction or the PV simulation is provided uh, on the other end of course this is uh, what can be done for the wind turbines as well um, monitoring data is included and of course uh, system configuration information like the inclination and orientation of the modules for example uh, for wind turbines you would use the the hub height um, as a in, in configuration information um, beside the location then the, for these uh, representative systems uh, yield simulation can be uh, provided um, also operation management information can be included like uh, outages or technical issues of systems within an um, grid region and this gives um, a regional PV power prediction or regional wind power prediction based on on weather data on the one hand and uh, system information on the other hand to have a reliable prediction of the yield of pv systems and wind systems in a grid region for the next 24 or even 48 hours how is this forecast be done so how do the weather forecast works uh, to have an accurate prediction of the insulation or the wind speed within the next hours and days what you have is you have satellite data um, for uh, the actual time step and the previous time step so 15 minutes before so you, you see the clouds moving um, that gives you the, a motion vector field so the motion of these clouds uh, and with this motion vector field you can extrapolate the motion uh, of these clouds so you can derive a forecast uh, how will be the pattern of the clouds within the next uh, time step so within the next minutes hours or even days of course the longer the forecast is uh, the worse the accuracy with uh, will will be then you do some some smoothing um, and that gives you uh, a prediction of the insulation or even the wind speed um, for uh, the systems in your grid region so you know what will be the radiation uh, of uh, within your grid region and you use this radiation data this predicted or forecast radiation data uh, to uh, provide uh, simulations of the yield of these PV systems 
um, to have an accurate regional PV power prediction. Here you can see the concept of the solar energy production forecast. Uh, we have uh, for the photovoltaic system, we take the satellite data, we take local radiation forecast information, uh, we consider the PV system configuration and of course uh, if available you can use historical PV system monitoring data uh, which is used to um, simulate uh, the energy yield of these PV system. Of course the simulation should be validated with the actual yield of the PV system. And uh, what, what, what you can do now is you can use this simulation data for representative PV systems, select uh, the PV system in, in your target, in your grid region, um, and then what you do is you extrapolate these results of these representative PV systems to the installed capacity of all PV systems in a tar target region. Uh, under consideration of uh, the statistical distribution of the orientation and the inclination of the modules, the capacity, and that gives you an accurate prognosis uh, for the forecast and you have an online extrapolation for your target uh, region or your grid region uh, with a very high accuracy or the inaccuracy uh, is smaller than 2%, so a high quality prediction you have. Uh, of course, the larger the grid region is, the better uh, the prediction will be. Um, this concept can also be used for wind turbines uh, by using the configuration uh, and weather information per, for each wind turbine. Uh, the system configuration information and then you can uh, do the prediction in a similar manner uh, to extrapolate uh, the yield of the wind turbines in a specific uh, grid region. On this diagram you can see the actual and the prognosed uh, energy production by PV systems on the 1st of June 2020 in Germany. You see in blue that's the day ahead prognosis of the PV energy production uh, for this day and in green you see the actual energy production on this day with the data from the German Federal Network Agency. In, you see that the actual production is slightly larger than the, uh, the, the expected one and in, in red you see the deviation in megawatts for each uh, 50 minute time step so there's a um, positive deviation with an uh, under or the underestimation of the actual production of about one gigawatt. Um, so in this case uh, the TSOs, uh, the grid operators, need to adopt uh, due to this deviation this one gigawatt of additional energy in the grid which hasn't been expected uh, due to the weather forecast. Uh, but due to this deviation they, that, that's not, not a big issue for the energy operators or the grid operators um, to uh, adopt this deviation and uh, to reduce the power outcome of uh, the other power plants um, to uh, fulfill the electricity demand. Uh, but you see that even on this clear sky day uh, there, there's this small deviation which occurs uh, without any severe negative effect on the stability of the grid. If the actual and prognosed power of PV and wind uh, turbines is compared, this shows a high accuracy. What you can see on the diagrams are the prognosed and actual power values for each 15 minutes interval of the year 2019. Uh, on the left hand side you see the comparison of the prognosis to the actual power uh, for the PV systems, on the right hand side uh, for the wind turbines and you see for the PV system we are very we're within the bandwidth of plus minus uh, 5 gigawatts so you see the power, the actual power on the x-axis, the prognosed power on the y-axis these red lines show the deviation of minus 5, minus 10 gigawatts or an over um, uh, estimation of plus 5 and plus 10 gigawatts. For the PV systems, um, the prognosis is within this plus minus 5 gigawatts uh, band. Uh, for the wind turbines uh, on the right hand side, you see a similar 
situation most of the prognosed values are within this bandwidth of plus and minus five gigawatt there are some large deviations uh, under severe weather conditions with an overestimation or underestimation of plus minus 10 gigawatts but mainly we are within this bandwidth of plus and minus five gigawatts so we have a high highly accurate prognosis which is comparable to the prognosis quality for fossil power plants um, for example for the coal and nuclear power plants due to unexpected technical issues um, the, the quality of this prognosis is on the same uh, magnitude of plus and minus 5 to plus minus 10 gigawatts. Um, so the prognosis quality um, or the forecast of the energy yield and of the power which is fed into the grid of, of PV systems and wind uh, systems is very well um, and reliable. And uh, that is very important to know that you can... Uh, exchange uh, and trade the electricity of PV systems and wind uh, turbines uh, on the EPEX spot market with a high reliability and the possibility to, to earn money.